Hi everybody, my name is Nick and welcome back to another Astro Exploring video. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to process astrophotography images in Photoshop in 10 minutes. For this tutorial I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop 2021, the latest version, and I also apologise in advance because this tutorial will go quite fast um, because it needs to to be able to get it done in 10 minutes. Um, however, if you're a beginner to processing images in Photoshop then um, just feel free to pause the video um, along the way. Now I do have the Astronomy Tools action set installed over here and I'm going to try and use that as little as possible in this tutorial. However, I will use two specific actions right at the very end because they really will make a massive difference to the final look of the image. This is a paid plugin which is why I'm going to try and use it as little as possible. However, these two specific actions which you'll see towards the end will really make this image pop. However, you can download the Astronomy Tools action set um, pretty cheap and if you get it um, fairly soon they've actually got a 20% sale on at the minute. So um, full price $21.95 and call it $22 but it's 20% off. So um, you're looking at about $18 which is, I don't know what's that, £12, £13, something like that. It's, it's hardly anything. There are, uh, what's this, 34 actions in the tool set itself and so it makes a huge difference. I use quite a few of these actions in every single image that I process. Right now let's get into editing the image. This is the stack straight out of Deep Sky Stacker of the North American Nebula. It's five hours of data I'm using my modified Canon DSLR 650D with all my usual gear which you'll see in the description down below and this is um, five hours of data in total. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this image from a 32-bit to a 16-bit and change the method from local adaptation to exposure and gamma and leave those settings as default. Okay, and it's also a good idea, just as a hint, just to keep an eye on the histogram over here as we're working. So the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to do a levels adjustment and I'm going to do each channel individually and I'm just going to I'm just going to drag these sliders across and it's important that when you're doing this you don't want to come right up tight here so that the um, left hand edge of the data is is all the way over to the left because it doesn't give you any room to play with at the end so I'm going to only bring it across about halfway so that I've got a bit of um, capacity to play with later uh, I'll leave that about there um, and bring the blue one into about there. So you can already see that um, we've got the data um, showing a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few curves adjustments by going to layer, new adjustment layer, curves. Just hit OK on that. I'm going to be quite, I'm going to be quite aggressive with with these curves. Um, and once you've done that, it's very important to, after each curve, to readjust the levels. You can do that by either clicking on the new layer button there or using the uh, keyboard shortcut. Um, so we're going to go back to the levels now and just have a look at where we are. So you can see that I can bring the red slider back in. Again, I'm still going to give myself room to play with. but you can see what a difference adjusting the levels each time makes. And I'm going to make another curves adjustment. That's probably a bit too much. All right, okay. This isn't going to be perfect, by the way, guys, hence I'm doing it in uh, 10 minutes. Um, you can spend hours <laughs> editing astrophotography. Um, but a lot of the time, I thought I, would, I thought I would make this video. A lot of the time, I don't have time to spend uh, too much um, time on editing images. However, I still like to uh, to get them out, and it's nice to also just do a quick and dirty edit sometimes, just to see what um, what data you are playing with, and, and you can come back to it when you've got a bit more time. So you can see now from where we started, uh, just after two curves adjustments, um, just how much better this is looking already. Um, so 
now that we've done the levels, I'm going to do, I'm just going to do one more curve stretch. Nothing, nothing too aggressive. Something like that. And back to the levels. I should stress this isn't this isn't the whole process of how I edit my astrophotography, but it does give you a great insight into how you can just quickly make an image look incredible from how it did um, straight out of Deep Sky Stacker. Right, so now that we've done the curves and the levels, um, I'm going to... You can give your layers a name if you want to, but um, I'm going to leave them as, as default. Um, I'm going to make the stars smaller. The Astronomy Tools action set has a an action that you can run called Make Stars Smaller, but um, as I said, I wasn't going to use that. I am going to go to Select Color Range. Highlights. I leave the fuzziness at 20, and I'm just going to pull. So that's too much. You just want to drag that slider so that it's not pulling out the nebula, but you've still got a lot of the stars. So. I'll leave it about there. So that's selected a lot of the stars. And now we're going to go to filter other minimum. And we want to preserve roundness. We definitely don't want it at 100. We want it at more like 2. And we're going to run that. OK, let's see how that looks. So that's how it looked before. That's how it looked now. That's a bit, that's a bit too much for my liking. So I'll change the opacity to something like that. And then again, it's just important to just keep checking your levels. I don't think there'll really be too much to do here on this one. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is, I don't like my stars to be too sharp, but these are really quite fuzzy, so I'm going to go to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen, and these are sort of the default settings that I'll use pretty much every time, so 200% on the amount and the radius at 1, reduce noise down at 0, and that will just make those stars look a bit sharper. Okay, so from here you can see, you know, where we where we started at the beginning um, compared to where we are now. This is this is where we started, um, and this is where we are now. So we're doing pretty well. Um, this is where I'm going to use two of the action sets within the astronomy tool action set. Um, so the two that I'm going to use, I'm going to first use lighten only DSO and dimmer stars um, and that's going to run its thing in the background so I'll just pause the video here while it runs because it takes a minute to run. Okay so you can see that this is a bit ridiculous when it's on full that's how it was before and it has it has lightened the DSO and the dimmer stars that you can see around the edges there however um, that is way over processed so I'm going to take that back down to maybe 50 even that looks a bit too much maybe 40 um, and leave that there. I'm then going to go back to the levels, you guessed it, um, and I, I always do these individual channels because I just find that you get much more control over what you're doing. We'll just leave that bit of data out. Okay, and new layer, and now I'm going to go on enhance DSO and reduce stars. And again, I'm going to pause the um, video here because this one takes a couple of minutes to run. There's quite a lot involved in this one. Um, but just so you know, I use all of the default settings as it goes through. So you're not missing anything by me pausing the video. Um, it just takes a couple of minutes to run. Okay, so that has finished running. Um, you can see that it has brought out a lot more detail in the nebula than uh, was there before. But it's also obviously lightened the background as well and I'm going to turn the opacity of that down to 50% and the opacity is really important a lot of the time you can really stretch the data but then just bring the opacity back down and it doesn't um, it doesn't ruin your image um, although this is looking 
a bit too ridiculous if I'm being honest. So um, I'll just leave this at 30 um, and of course check the levels now that I've done that so I can bring the red into about there the green can come in a bit and so can the blue I'll just bring that in to about there okay so new layer um, one of the last things that I'm going to do on this tutorial is to um, change the uh, saturation just to just to bring out a bit more of the the red color I'm not gonna go too much here maybe to about 10 just gives it a bit of a deeper red color which um, which I quite like but you can do that to your settings astrophotography processing is is an, a form of art so it's sort of to your taste however you want to process your images is entirely up to you and don't let anyone tell you otherwise um, and the last thing that I'm going to do now, because the sky is a bit ridiculous, I am going to just do a final curves adjustment, but just bring it back down a bit, and then I can just put the nebula back up there. All right. And that's it. That's where I'm going to leave it. I it's it's far from perfect but you can see that actually you know from where we started here um to here in 10 minutes i think that's i think that's pretty good so i'm going to save that as a png on the computer and we'll just compare it to the um version that i spent sort of an hour or so doing so i'll just put youtube test and save that so here's where we started here is um, five hours of data and I spent maybe an hour sort of processing that uh, and refining it a bit again it's not perfect but to be honest my um, my Photoshop editing isn't perfect anyway um, let me just go back to here and let's uh, let's have a look so actually well Oops. Um, you can see that I've I've overdone it on the left hand side here I would spend quite a bit of time uh, just sort of fixing up that left hand third of the image if you like but actually overall I think for a 10 minute effort that's that's pretty reasonable and not too far off the uh, the effort that I um, spent over an hour doing um, so this is where we started and this is where we've ended up. So I hope you found this video useful. If you're new to Photoshop or astrophotography in general, um, I think post-processing is something that a lot of people can spend a lot of time on, and quite rightly so, because you can see that I've really butchered um, this um, quite a bit on the left-hand side there. Um, but it's not something that has to take forever. It's not something that's hugely scary. You know, there are so many things that you can do in, in Photoshop and um, other post-processing um, software that it can seem very very daunting but i just thought i would make a, a video to just show what you can do in just 10 minutes so i hope you appreciate this video if you liked it please remember to give it a thumbs up remember to subscribe to my channel uh, hit the bell notification so that you never miss another upload my name is nick and you have been watching astro exploring and i'll see you guys next time